Hi, good morning. Uh, welcome to TWR Facebook Live. Uh, I am uh, doing this Facebook Live from California. Uh, very excited um, to do this uh, for whole two months from uh, 6 6 June 6 through 8 8 August 8 so for a whole two months and I hope that uh, all of you are also very excited about it so we are all um, once again like uh, last time when we did the sleep yoga practice for quite a long period of time we are all committed together to practice together to be together to feel the connection with each other and feel supported by each other and so uh, as it has been incredible wonderful wonderful experience for all of us and so um, so we took a little bit little break now and now once again we begin this uh, uh, teaching on a dream yoga and um, so there's a few things that I wanted to start this morning uh, one just wanted to say a few words about the source of these teachings because uh, I think uh, uh, when, whenever we are engaging with any spiritual teaching I think it's good to know where they are coming from um, about source the lineage and transmission and so on so so first of all this the teaching that I am going to explain next two months the main source of this teaching are coming from two different sources uh, actually uh, both of them are mm, they're of course they're all in Tibetan so it won't help very much but uh, um, one is the Maju this is the Mada Tantra Maju Sangje Jusum and uh, in Maju Sangje Jusum there is uh, um, we call um, Tabduk Lamchar, so like a thick six methods of practices, and among six methods of practices, dream, sleep, pardo, elements, and poa, and chu, and all these practices are there. So I'm, I'm sure some of these, um, for some of you, it doesn't mean mean much, but at least this is connected with the tantric teaching and a burn tantric teaching called Maji Sangji Jusum and uh, also later uh, commentary by Shazar Mboche uh, Shazar Tashi Janse who achieved body of light and uh, he have composed uh, a text uh, both sleep and dream yoga together in Kusum Rangshar so these are the main kind of sources where I studied, I, I practice, I, I trace back to that. But I, of course I'm going to try to explain in as simple as possible, as accessible as possible, as personal as possible uh, for me and oh, personal, in a personal sense and for personally for me how I understand how I've been practicing and also a personal in the sense that it will personally it will make some sense to you. So this is my as always my approach of teaching and I will try to do my best to explain that way um, so the other thing is I want to talk about is the about commitment I'm not saying that every everybody need to commit to me uh, I, I'm saying that if we all need to, to commit to each other we all need to, to commit it to these practices we all need to, to commit it for next two months at least that we are going to commit to these practices and um, day and night because this is as we are saying the deepening the awareness of the day and night so it's deepening our spiritual practices day and night deepening our realization day and night so basically this engagement is day and night but that does not mean that you have to practice uh, in a five point posture sitting po position for hours it does not mean that but it means that you have to do some formal practices you have to do 
uh, num more informal practices throughout the day and th throughout the night some sense so basically what I'm asking you all all of you is are you committed for next two months practicing with the cyber Sangha as in the airline when you go to the airline when you sit in the exit line they will ask you are you willing to help and the they said they want a verbal yes uh, it's nodding head is not enough or, or or thinking something in your mind is not enough I want you to hear in the comment saying yes um, yes I'm committed so I want and not only I wanted to see that how many people are saying yes but also I wanted to each other all of you look at each other how many people are saying yes and also yourself when you moment you type yes you you wanted to keep that commitment I yes I did say yes and I am going to be committed to next next two months in these practices so please go ahead and say yes and feel that commitment and feel that commitment toward each other and I am also here uh, present and I'm also feeling the same thing with all of you saying I am with you all all, all of with all of you for next couple of uh, months so so please go ahead with that and now the other thing is here is as you know probably many of you have uh, um, read a lot of things and hear different teachings and uh, also of course the dream yoga the work of dream is throughout you know uh, centuries and in many different cultures many indiv in indigenous cultures and Western cultures and Freudian, Jung, and Aboriginal, Native American, Tibetan, Indian. You can imagine so many knowledge about the dream is out there. So I'm sure many of you already are familiar a uh, number of them. And and so so this of course these teachings are specifically going to be more focused on Tibetan dream yoga practice. And so I wanted to also to let everybody know that uh, you know a number of years ago, and uh, I, I wrote a book, Tibetan Yoga of Dream and Sleep. So if you, if anybody has a copy, a front copy of that, go ahead and post there. And I, I should have prepared, but I don't, did not do my prepare the book here, so I don't have the book. But um, please go ahead and also I'm asking uh, asking all of you in a different countries because I know that the book has been published in many different languages and uh, anybody or any of you when, if you have a book in your language just take a snapshot of the front cover and post it there uh, on the page here on the Facebook and then uh, and then maybe you can say where you can get those books. I don't know. So you in that in your country, the other people are watching this or will watch the recorded work, recorded teaching, and they might know where to get the book in your country. So you might helping other people to get access to the book. So a reason why I'm saying that because next two month we are going to be very engaged in these practices and these teachings, and I will definitely recommend all of you to uh, keep the dream yoga book right next to your bed and and uh, study it read it study it and uh, trying to understand but also uh, not to think about that expect everything you want to understand everything on the, what book is talking about or expecting every experiences that you wanted to have uh, but I mean, dream yoga. These teachings are it's a lifetime practice. This is our, uh, you know, one third of our lifetime we sleep. So average, average we sleep twenty to twenty five years, or maybe even thirty years if you live long. So imagine sleeping twenty five years, and uh, but we can, of course, we can imagine uh, how many years so far already you slept. Maybe you might have slept ten years already. Imagine you slept 10 years. Can you imagine that you slept 10 years or you slept 15 years already? Sleeping 15 years. So so what we wanted to do now on, now on until 
the last moment of your life, you wanted to say, I want you to not waste like last 10 years, last five years, last 15 years. Don't want you to waste my night. Um, I want you to engage with the practice. So, so that means I think the Dream Yoga book will be very handy to ongoing. This is not like a, of course, the two months we are committing here with each other to practice supporting each other. But the practice itself, until you sleep, until you fully wake up, uh, you're going to need it and you're going to practice it. So please help that anybody who has that book, uh, take a snapshot and post it here and let other people know where they can get their book. So now one really like kind of important part, just maybe like let me summarize a little bit. What is a dream yoga practice? Why it's important? Uh, when to do these practices? And how to do these practices? So maybe I'll talk a little bit in these terms what, why, when, and how. So what is a dream yoga practice? Of course, uh, dream yoga practice in the context of what I'm talking here, this dream yoga practice is uh, a personal and spiritual development. So I will narrow down into two principles, personal and spiritual development. Personal development will be that able to overcome a lot of our own conditions, limitations, our pains, our wounds, our uh, conflicted stories, um, to able to basically overcome so much things what we don't need in our life and we do we have them but even we don't know we have them and we get stuck in them for example a few examples will be uh, imagine that you are working in a job that you really hate to do but you have been already 10 20 30 years doing the job which you hate so every single day you 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 hate that job you go when you think about the job you don't like it when you go drive there you don't like it when you arrive there you don't like it you don't like it whole day you don't like it you come back you don't like the work so imagine that your bad relationship with your profession um definitely it's not a good lifestyle or imagine that I'm talking about the personal development. I'm talking about the personal and spiritual development. I'm talking a little bit about a personal sense, what, I'm, what I mean by personal sense. So look at the job situation like that. Or look at the relationship that you really have, uh, you don't feel the connection, you don't have the connection, uh, you, you don't feel that sense of warmth and love, you feel like a block pain, and but also you you live with so much pain speech you kind of fight a lot complain a lot are you know so are a lot of argument or you have spent the that kind of lifestyle relationship with somebody for too long time too long time so 10 years 15 years 20 years so some point you 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 just basically you cannot continue your life like that unless you really wanted to you know, end up not good. You don't want it to continue life like that. But in order to transform, in order to change, somebody got to recognize that is the life you're living and that is the life you don't, you have a choice not to live life like that. You have a choice to change it and you have a power within you to change it. That you have to realize. And, and, and through these practices, it will change your day, deepen your awareness of the day, and it will also deepen your awareness in the night because you can see the your kind of lifestyle you're living, it it shows up in the night. Dreams it shows up. It shows up in your uh, decision making choices. It, it sh shows up when we choose things. It shows up when you talk. So you are basically your personality, your personal life is very much bounded with this certain conditions certain stories, certain pains, and these are, when you wanted to transcend them, you wanted to be free from them. So that is the idea, is 
personal developments to be free from them the dream yoga becomes very uh, good practice so when i talk about the spiritual spiritual part of it so i don't i don't think maybe it's applicable for everybody who is listening to here or not but at least i wanted to mention that for us as a, a teach tibetan as a practicing burn as a practicing buddhism we would think about the practice principle of these practices is to achieve liberation a free uh, total liberation freedom from samsara so so of course those you understand that those you can feel the relation to that so that is the purpose Sp spiritual pur develop means basically um, going beyond individuality uh, go, uh, freeing your personality a pain personality uh, uh, limited personality or per, uh, individuality so you, being free from that uh, being fr free from that a sense of one sense of self from oneness with the whole universe and everybody else so that is like a transcending the ego is what I think it's proper to say spiritual development so um, so basically um, um, freeing free from a lot of conditions from the life and enhancing your uh, your life will be personal development transcending the ego will be going beyond uh, personal uh, individuality that will be like a spiritual uh, uh, transformation so the dream yoga what is the dream yoga practice is this trans personal and spiritual transformation is what I would say it is the really like the purpose of the dream yoga practice so dream yoga practice is not about just analyzing dream because I met one time a person who uh, who was I'm not com uh, criticizing anything in the sense of Jungian I think uh, I think I believe in the analysis and I think it's important to analyze dreams in some degree but uh, when you analyze too much when you go beyond uh, um, the need of need of analyze and need to be analyzed then I think there is some problem with the analytical approach because uh, not everybody needs to analyze not not everyone needs an a, a analytical approach but if you are the one who needs it and then you want you to be aware that you you want you to go for it but you want to do trying to keep it short simple direct and eventually free from that analytical approach uh, and that will be I think the right way of working with analytical approach with thinking that you wanted to be free from it eventually sooner than the later so 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 what is again what is the dream yoga practice so dream yoga practice is very much about personal and spiritual transformation um, and also in the uh, specifically like a practices that what we will be teaching next two months will be uh, talking a lot about you know that this aspect of how actually it, it is important going how it helps to go deeper into personal and spiritual development we will be going deep into that and also we will be talking a lot about uh, lucid dreaming uh, lucid dreaming is very much about um being aware so being aware of your dream as a dream so uh, definition of lucid dream will be dream being aware of your dream as a dream while you're dreaming so while you're dreaming being aware of it so d lucid dreaming has nothing to do with a fancy uh, elaborate or, or, or spiritual good dream fun dream it has nothing to do with good or bad it has simply do you can have nightmare you are aware of that aware of that this is a nightmare that's a lucid dream you can be having a conversation with the Buddha and you are if you are not aware that you are having conversation with the Buddha and that is not a lucid dream so you can have a good dream but not lucid you can have a bad dream you could have a lucid so dream, lucid dream has nothing to do with good and bad so but lucid dream is very important why lucid dream is very important 
What is the main key? What is the main point? It's because of awareness. And awareness is very important. If you are aware right right moment, for example, I am teaching right moment and on Facebook. If I am right with right this very moment when I'm I say myself, I am aware right now, I am talking on my camera and doing a Facebook live. I'm conscious. That very moment I am in a way aware of it. But maybe five minutes ago I was talking but I was not necessarily aware that I was talking. Same same for you. You're listening. Maybe now you are aware that you are listening to me. But five minutes ago you are not you're listening to me but you are not aware you're listening to me. So I think it's very important to this sense of being aware. So I want everybody to just for for a moment just just think about this. Being aware of this moment. Being aware of your body, being aware of your breath, being aware of specifically your inhalation, your exhalation, being aware of where you're sitting how you're sitting, you're listening to me. You see, you're listening to me, I am speaking, when the awareness comes in, when I'm speaking, when awareness comes in, when you're listening, my speaking and your listening, the quality of my speaking, quality of your listening, completely different. It improves a lot. So I just want everybody to be aware of that. So, so what is a what is a dream? What is a dream yoga? So, it's it's about um, knowledge, teachings, and practices of lucid dream. So. So we will be teaching exercises that will help to you to have a lucid dream. So you to have a aware, for example, exercise right now, a guided exercise right now, as I reminded you and myself that to be aware of our this very moment, and we were able to be aware of this moment. We are able to be aware of our actions of this moment of talking and listening. So the same way, the dream yoga practice is also the teaching and knowledge is about how to have that same awareness in your dream because it's very important to have a lucid dream and because when you are lucid then you are you gain some sense of freedom uh, to not get stuck in in the places you are stuck in and able to be free from those places and able to choose the options, the possibility and able to guide yourself to specific areas of your life or experiences, redirecting, refocusing. The ability to do all of those things comes only when you are lucid, only when you know you are dreaming. Same way, if I am aware of Angry, angry right moment right this moment then i can say well i am agitated i am angry and if if i'm aware of i am angry this moment i have much more better chances to stop getting angry or choose choose to redirect my attention and and guide my anger uh, to releasing it to clearing it 
to to even able to see a different perspective what I'm looking at the stories and change even possible change anger the right that that very raw anger able to transform that into deep connected love it's possible absolutely it's possible if only I am aware of my anger if I'm not aware of my anger the chances are so less chances are minimized I am sure you know some people that if you tell them when they are angry you tell them or oh, you are agitated they will say I am not agitated I am not angry you see you can you can see their physical reaction you can see their facial expression and they are and verbally they are still denying they are not angry even their body is showing even their face is showing even their tone of voice is showing but their mouth their speech can still deny i'm sure you know people like that so the it's not only someone is like that we do that all the time so so the dream yoga practice is to have a lucid dream and then after you have a lucid dream what to do how to trans, how to feel free from these conditions the pain problems and how to see the options and how to choose what is the right for you and th these are the dream yoga practice so then eventually when you are able to exercise that um like a uh, a lot for example when you are able to exercise when you are day to day life in your life when you are able to exercise that during your meditation when you are able to exercise that in your dream then these three places everyday life in meditation in dream these three places is very important practice to learn and once you learn these three places then the fourth place comes play, comes in which is the moment of death so then in the after uh, during the during dying process and uh, after you you die ability to be aware of that you are dead that you need remembering your practice your teachers your practice your experiences your realizations and your the informations you need to, to know what you need to, to do that moment after you die if you are able to uh, be conscious in in the moment after death what you what you what choices you have what you need to, to guide your mind where you need to, to guide your mind so so that practice is also part of the dream yoga practice so basically that is what is the dream yoga practice so i am talking about what is the dream yoga practice that is a dream yoga practice let's say why it's important why it's important is because uh one of the excuses that we all have in our life we say oh i can i cannot i don't have a time to practice um i don't know we say that i mean i i've heard that a lot people say that i don't have a time to practice people have a time to worry a lot people have a time to complain a lot people have a time to get upset people have a time to get angry people have a time to get agitated people have a time for every thing but not time for practice it's it's kind of very strange but it's that's how people are so people say that so but but nevertheless that's how people say it, that's how people feel and that's how people experience so so when you go to sleep everybody goes to sleep either you are rich you are poor you are famous not famous you are children you are teenage you are old and everybody goes to sleep right so because that's how our agenda we have a calendar for the day after you sleep you don't you don't say i have a 10 o'clock i'm going to dream and 11 o'clock i'm going to have a lucid dream and 12 i'm going to have so much fun with my lucid dream and and then maybe 1 o'clock in the morning i'm going to turn my lucid dream into spiritual practices no you don't have any choices you just said i'm sleeping that's it so so somehow the sense of lack of power 
lack of choices, lack of ability. We need to bring that all this, all forget about all this kind of limitations. We think the night is in. I say our night, our dream and sleep is infinite possibility for personal and spiritual development. Infinite possibility for personal and spiritual development. I am totally excited about it. I am going to engage in it. So this sense of really like a commitment, I think is very important. So, so the possibility completely opens up in the night. Every night we go to sleep. So we have six, seven, eight hours of extra time to do our meditation, our practices. The possibility is there. I'm sure maybe some of you are thinking, oh, no way, no way. It's impossible to do that. Well, well, just I just if you are anyone you are there who is thinking a little bit like that, I want you to hear yourself. You just said impossible and you just made it impossible for yourself and the rest of the people stayed open and the rest of the people said possible and for them it's possible. And some people said I'm going to engage completely and they are they are going to engage completely. Some someone said their the intensity their their connection is so strong they're going to have probably lucid dreaming lucid dreaming tonight they're going to have amazing experiences of sleep and dreaming tonight because not that you you all are um, uh, one is better and one is worse uh, your ability but your relation to to this teaching and these practices so strong for one person and so weak for another person that strength and that weakness will define when the moment you go to sleep tonight. That, that the power will carry on to the night and the power will carry on into a dream and sleep. If you don't have that kind of outlook, if you don't have that kind of commitment, engagement, and you, you cannot expect to have some kind of deep experiences tonight. So, so just I think it's important to remember. So why is it important? Because we open up a lot of more time for our spiritual and personal development. So, of course, some people you can think about and it's a kind of funny idea and think about sleeping and healing and sleeping and recovering, sleeping and um, discovering, sleeping and uh, developing and sleeping and maybe close get, Every morning you get up, you are a little closer to the enlightenment, or a little closer to your absolute well-being. Think about that. So that whole seven hours, eight hours of the night opens up that possibility for you if you look at that way. So I want you to look at that way. Why it's important? When to do it? Next, the the third. What, what it is, why it's important, and when to do it. So when to do it, of course, most of the time when people think about the dream yoga practice and the sleep yoga practice, the immediate thing, of course, during the dream. I'm going to do it in the night. But no, that's wrong. When to do it is, this is the practice, as the title of all the teaching is, deepening your awareness day, night. You're deepening your awareness of the day and night. So this is, it's, and most importantly, it's connected with the day and night. So this is, I think, is very important to understand. It's not only night; it's day and night. And how to practice? So there's a few things that I think we, before we run out of the time, I wanted to make sure that we cover, is these. For for this week, so all of you know that. Uh, the cycle of the teaching we are planning to do every Tuesday, every Tuesday, one o'clock New York time. Uh, we when during the sleep yoga we did twice a week, so uh, and I think it's a little bit little bit too much for me. So we are doing once a week. If there is some um, extra time opens up, and I, I feel as I ref, I'm reflecting a lot of my practices in the night. Am I reflecting uh, about the teaching during the daytime? If I feel there's some some important things I wanted to share, I will just go ahead and go on Facebook Live and share it anywhere. 
um, I know so it will be recorded and those you will not be able to watch live you will able to see it later so I will I will do that but when 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 there's some spe special thing to share but other other than that every week every Tuesday one o'clock New York time we will see each other for next two months and let everybody else know about that so four things here that I think is important to remember uh, so let's say this way one thing is the most important thing to remember is during this week I want all of you to be aware of the connection between the day and night so this is really important the connection between the day and night they are absolutely connected to each other think about that maybe for just for a moment of reflection think about this last couple of weeks if you look at your dreams or last couple of years if you look at your reoccurring dreams those recurring dreams or those dreams that you have last couple of weeks maybe some intense dreams even like nightmares or very specific me message dream with very specific messages you have these experiences during sleep in your dream but these experience these dreams are happening during the waking life so I want you to look at your dream and I want you to clearly see same things are happening during the daytime maybe in your relationship maybe in your personal life maybe in your professional professional life they are happening but you are not necessarily aware of them but this is the homework for you is to reflect and connect make the dots connect each other so that's the kind of the the headline i think this this is important so but there are specific four things that Shazar Mbuja talks about it. Shazar Mbuja talks about it. It says, Milam la masina, cholam la misin, cholam la masina, gom la misin, gom la misin, pardo la misin. What does that mean is if you are not able to be conscious in sleep, in a dream, then you are not able to be conscious in your behavior. If you are not able to be conscious in your behavior, if you, then you are not able to be conscious in your meditation. If you are not able to be conscious in your meditation, then you are not able to be conscious in your pardo. So Shastra Mbuchi start with the dream, conduct, meditation and the pardo. Pardo is the moment you die. But I'm going to go and do it slightly different way here. And I wanted to start with the, instead of dream, I'm going to start with the behavior. So be behavior, which is the daytime. Okay, so I want you to pay very close attention now on until next week next tuesday very 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 close attention to your life and very very cl close attention to your body your speech and your mind and that's all what you have that's all what you live with or live through and uh, act through so that's the most important what we call three doors go some your body your speech and your mind so either it's a pain posture of your body or where you walk um, or you even the way you identify like a pain body pain body or what I call pain body as identity pain identity like a, I am this miserable lawyer I don't know I don't, you will not say that right but I am a lawyer You identify I I am a lawyer but that we know you you study for many years you got a certificate you invested a lot of money you got the degree we know that but you when you say I am a lawyer but it's not only I am a lawyer it comes a lot of things with it I am a lawyer who does not have any time for my family for myself to rest relax to have fun to enjoy to practice I am this miserable lawyer the sense of too much overwhelmed 
conflicted, resistant, that sense of lawyer. I want you to see if somebody is living for 20 years feeling that pain, identity of lawyer. It's still, there's a still chance to change it. This is what we were talking earlier about personal development. I want you to be very conscious of yourself about your body in that way. I want you to be very conscious of yourself in your speech. Of course, I'm talking right now. I can be talking and I can be complaining a lot. I can be criticizing a lot of other people who, who are who other people who are working on teaching dream yoga or doing dream work and I'm I can be going on that right it's all possibilities are there or I could be very openly focusing on things that I, I feel is what is the most important thing in my experience is my in my understanding and very clearly focus on that and this sense of warmth connection to all of you and trying to do my best with a good intention, with a good prayer. May these, whatever I am doing, may these help all of you. I can stay with that, uh, stay with that prayer intention through my speech. I have possibilities are there. It can go one way or the other way. So what I'm asking all of you is watch your speech. If your relationship is very important in your life this moment, Watch your speech when you talk with your husband, your wife, your girlfriend, your 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 boyfriend, your partner, your first date. Even your first date, you don't want to go in first date. The worst first date will be you go there and talk about yourself all the time. Forget about the next second date, right? I'm sure you have experiences already there. Just what I'm saying is if you're doing it, if you have if you have done it, it's okay you have done it. If you are you have a date, you have a meeting, you have a business meeting, you have a, a meeting with a client, with your boss, watch your speech if the profession, if your job is important. How you want to watch your speech? Basically, are you are open, are you are connected? Are you saying something from that open, warm, connected, productive, clarity, positions, or you are disconnected, loss, and pain, complaining, and disconnecting with everybody else? Watch your speech. Watch your mind. Watch your mind, pain, mind. When you have a moment when you say, Oh, I'm going to take a nap, and you just take a take a half an hour nap. Take a time for half an hour. You lie down in your bed. The moment you lie down in your bed, what kind of thought comes? All the possible thing can go wrong. Possible thing can go wrong with your work, with your relationship, your health. Of course, the possibilities are there. But. Thinking about all this negative imagination, which is you did not intend to think, you are addicted to think, you are conditioned to think, it's not a productive at all. First of all, you are losing your 15 minute, half an hour nap time, a power nap time, great, great opportunity to lose. I think it's sad to lose this 15 minute nap, I, I love naps. You don't want to lose your 15, 20, half an hour nap. Sometimes we do. But you especially you don't want to lose with those, those horrible thoughts. Watch your thoughts. So what I'm saying here is watch your body, pain identity, pain, pain body, watch your pain speech, complaining, complaining, especially to people who are important to you, you care, you love, you respect, you want to work with me. You work with them, you need them, you don't want to mess up. So watch that. And also, if you see some things, okay, well, well, I'm incredible. What kind of pain body that I'm living last 20, 30 years, you might be really like incredibly awakened, saying, shocking, you're getting shocked. That you see urgency, you need to go to the 
you know, like uh, the em emergency or right away, like, or you need to right away need to change everything. You will, you 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 might do that. You might realize that. And and you also will see that all the things what is happening in your body, you're happening in your speech, happening in your mind, is the responsible you are having problems sleeping. Sleeping is one of the biggest problem what modern society is facing, challenging with first of all with the light, street lights, with the screens on computer, phone, iPads, last moment until the last moment we we TVs, too much stimulation of light and this of false lights. And then too much of these thoughts of body, speech and mind. That's why we are having problems sleeping. That's why you are having problem uh, breaking your sleep. That's why you are having kind of dream that you are having. Just so you look at your day, you look at your night, see the connection. This is the highlight of this today's session is to see the connection between day and night. Understand the important that day is affecting night, night is affecting day. Understand it's important that that your need to, to engage into the practice through the day to affect night, in the night to affect the day. So just to realizing that I think it's very, very important. So four things we were talking here. Chulam behavior, this is what we're talking right now. So if you are you if you're able to bring more and more awareness in your body, more and more awareness in your pain speech complaining, more and more awareness in your mind, pain mind, then that means when if you're aware of it, your ability to free from those conditions, conflicts, pain stories, you have ch more chance. Able to guide your mind, body, speech and mind, you have much more chance. Chance able to free from those uh, addictive patterns, you have much more chance. Let's say you are aware and you, you realize you have much more chance, you realize you have much more option, you realize you don't only have an option, you did choose something, you did redirect something and that's a powerful moment. The moment you realize I'm angry, moment you realize I have an option to not get angry, moment you open up yourself, moment you saw, saw what reason why you are getting angry was there was no really a reason you have, that your fear had made it up and your reason you saw, uh, then you not only see that, you also saw the person you are, you are angry at is actually in fact is a great person, wonderful person, you, you begin to feel love toward that person, you, you change it everything in one power of one single awareness. If you did that during the daytime, now that is going to impact your night. So remember that. So remember so far all the activities of your day is affecting your night. And remember all the dreams that you are having has some relationship with the life you're living. Connection is there. So, so, so it's very important to make those connections uh, between the day and the night. Okay, so uh, just a summary. Conduct. All the practices in everyday life, what you're doing, just trying to bring much more awareness there. And then second one is during the meditation. Uh, when you do a formal meditation, trying to be conscious of how many times you get interrupted, just to recognize how many times interrupted and how many times when it's interrupting, you're able to recognize that you are interrupted and able to change and able to prolong the, the, your meditation without interruption. How many times you are able to do that exercise? That's the second thing. Chulam and second one is called Gom. If you are able to change 
in your conduct and able to change in your meditation, very likely you will able to change in your dream. If you're able to change in your dream, very likely you will able to change or be conscious in the moment you die. So these are the connection conduct, meditation, dream, and pardo. So I want everybody, did everybody hear that? I want maybe you want to, some of you hear that, just write it down on your screen uh, so that I see it, you got it. Conduct, chulam, gom, meditation, milam, dream, pardo, intermediate state. So there are four different stages, a chain of awareness that, that which kind of, they impact each other. They impact each other. So I want you to be conscious. It's true how they are con impacting each other and how you will participate in a better change to do that. So that will be our this week's um, kind of uh, homework and meditation. So, so before we end, I know like it's already 50 minutes, so we're going to do like a 10, 10 minute meditation together and just to, to reflect on what we did and also um, kind of um, also re, uh, strengthen our commitment to these next two months. So please, uh, for now, um, stop uh, uh, typing anything, just sit comfortably. So breathe out, deep breathe, breathe it out three, five times and each deep exhalation, breathe out all the tensions that you're experiencing, feeling this moment, breathe it out and each exhalation, rest deeper. Just for a moment, bring your attention to your body. Be fully aware of the stillness of your body. Be fully aware of the silence. Be fully aware of the spaciousness of the mind, openness of your heart.
and realize the importance of deepening your awareness day and night. Through these four stages, conduct, being aware of the conduct of the body, speech and mind during the day, how you're living your life, personal life, family life, professional life, how much of these where you if you are you feeling free, creative, warmth, joy, or you are feeling disconnected, resistant, pain, and manifesting that pain through your body, speech and mind for years, how many years, question. And you do not want to live continuously like that because some point you're going to suffer the consequences, big consequences of that. Dream yoga teaching practices will help us to able to change that. Look at your meditation second. How often it interferes, interrupted by your own thoughts, feelings, emotions, outer sounds, noises. Three, look at your dreams for last couple of years or years in your life. Some reoccurring dreams, repeating again and again the same story and asking you to, he to acknowledge, to recognize, to heal, but we don't hear it. People ask why I'm having a recurring dream. I, I sometimes tell that we are we are bad listeners. Listen to your recurring dream. Recognize your dream with a lot of messages, particularly messages with a lot of conflict and wounds and pain. It's, it's asking to transform, transcend, heal. but we don't pay enough attention. It's not, if it's only happening in the night, it's okay, but it's not only happening in the night, the same thing is happening during the daytime. Recognize that. And then the last fourth one, the pardo, the intermediate state. We don't have to kind of think so much right now, but eventually if there are some people who feel like that, you are in the process of preparing your death, then it's a good place to focus. The dream, it's a good place to focus. It's like a, having a taste of death without dying. having a taste of how unprepared we are 
moment of the death and having one another opportunity to do it better. The dream is that another opportunity to do it better. If it didn't work tonight, I'll try it tomorrow. But the moment we die, we don't have the next opportunity, at least not in this one lifetime. Just for a moment, reflect all this and just bring your in your heart. I will be, I'm committing to next two months to engage in this practice to heal my wounds, to discover my potentiality, to enrich my life and help others and ultimately to achieve liberation. And also feel the support that we have right now. During this Facebook Live, we have more than 500 people where participating live and throughout there are many other people who participate just feel that we are all supporting each other there is cyber sangha that we are supporting each other just feel that not loneliness feel that support and connection okay so gradually you can open your eye so hope the meditation was good and so uh, uh, next week next Tuesday we have a uh, uh, um, three uh, co-authors um, I'm not going to the last names are difficult for me to pronounce so I'm not going to do trying to take a risk here so sorry for that Thomas and Jared and Dylan so uh, they co-author a book called a field guide to lucid dreaming and uh, also the brochure the information is on my Facebook page so next week we will have a conversation specifically uh, their experiences, personal experiences, uh, how uh, to have the lucid dreaming. So this is what one of the uh, main important part of the Tibetan yoga of dream and sleep is also lucid dreaming. And lucid dreaming, uh, so many different ways to achieve that. I think whatever ways one can achieve that, it's fine as long as you have it. So it's good to be open to all the possible different ways to hear from different people. So we are very, very excited about also next week. So see you all next Tuesday, uh, 1 p.m. New York time. And again, thank you so much. Many of you laugh with my last message. I've asked everybody to help me to uh, send the message out to uh, outreach. So many people who like the page, who have made a comment and particularly who have shared the page. And I think as a result of that, you know, today we have more than 500 people alive. That was amazing. So thank you so much again, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.